Welcome back to the Hearthstone Legendary Season 2 Land Finals. Once again, my name is TJ Osmond, Kitty Sanders, and I'm joined by Keaton, the Big Sock Chalk Gill, and Jimmy, the Firebat Costa Stitch. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Good. Glad to hear it. That was a pretty good match that we just saw, but we're moments away from jumping into the winner's match of Group A, which is going to be Demigod versus Koike. Before we do that, we'd like to take one look at what we've seen so far today for those of you guys who are just now joining us. Uh, in the first match of the day, we saw Demigod take out Trump, and then recently we just saw Koyuki take a victory over Akabi in that second match. So we're going to move into the winner's match, and then the loser's match, and then we're going to round out Group A here in a little bit. But uh, Demigod versus Koyuki coming up next. Uh, Firebat, which one of these guys had the best deck list, do you think? I really like Demigod's lineup, how he designed it to counter Hunter. And it seems to be working out for him because both of his opponents so far are going to have a Hunter. So if his lineup's able to work as intended, then he should be able to bully Koyuki's Hunter out of the match. All right, Chalky, I need your predictions. Who's going to come out oh, man. of Group A in uh, first place? You know, I think lineup-wise, I agree with Firebat. I actually really like Demigod's chances here. His Freeze Mage should line up pretty well. I mean, Koyuki's third deck is Rogue. Mm -hmm. Doesn't have a great Freeze Mage matchup. I mean, he has the heal bot, but don't know if that'll quite be enough. I think Koyuki definitely has experience on his side, though. All right. Well, you can see the deck list once again on your screen there. I was talking to Demigod on the couch a little bit in between the matches, and he told me that he was targeting Handlock. Handlock. With his deck lineup, <laughs> wow. so he wasn't even. He okay. was like, "Oh, hmm, my decks good. Decks are good against Hunter. Cool. <laughs> what? <laughs> I was targeting Handlock. It really? Yeah. Well, that's a lucky coincidence then for him. I know, right? Because Handlock and Hunter are probably going to be pretty popular throughout today. Yeah, definitely. Especially yeah. when we get into the later groups with players like Life Coach, who's definitely known for Handlock. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, the self-proclaimed best player in Hawaii. Also, the me proclaiming best Kel'Thuzad impression in Hawaii. I'd say so. Yeah, I'd have to agree. Yeah. Until you get your way over to Hawaii, of course. I don't even know what he says. <laughs> I'm going to look up Kel'Thuzad's quote and just try and one-up Demigod. And then I'm going to go Hawaii, live there long enough to be considered a resident, just so I can take the crown of best Kel'Thuzad impression in Hawaii. Nice. You know what, TJ? You would. I would. <laughs> that is something that I would do. All right. Well, we're jumping into the first match here. Demigod with that Control Warrior versus Koyuki with the Grim Patron Warrior. Firebat, you were talking a little bit about this matchup earlier, and you said you think Grim Patron Warrior is favored, which is an unpopular opinion. Uh, yeah, I tend to think if you play Grim Patron Warrior correctly, you should be able to be favored. Uh, the Warrior doesn't really pressure you enough to cause any threat and it just gives you enough time to set up for your draw combos which then set up into your damage combos which then kill the opposing control warrior yeah i feel like one thing a lot of people might screw up is going all in too much and losing the stuff like brawl rather than being a little more patient like firebat said for your draw spells especially battle rage like if you can draw a bunch off that the warrior's not going to you know be in any rush to kill you yeah yeah exactly and if you're able to then draw, then Brawl isn't even a threat anymore because then you can immediately reload the board again after the Brawl. A lot of weapons in the opening hand of Koyuki, and Despite is probably one of the key cards. Despite's great. Uh, two Fiery War Axes, however, not really what you want to see in this matchup. Yeah, Fiery War Axe is really pretty useless against Control Warrior. It kills, like, Acolyte of Pain, and, like, that's about it. Looks like he's going to commit to two charges killing this Harmer's Myth, I guess. Yeah. Might play the Acolyte and leave it there next turn. Okay, I can see that. The Harrison Jones. Yeah, that'll be important. Yeah. But it'll be really interesting to see how he uses it, because you almost always want to be patient and use it at a very critical turn where the weapon matters. Yeah. A lot of other classes, you can pretty much take out the weapon. Like against Paladin, you can just use it on a Light's Justice, even though it's not that big of a deal of a weapon, just yeah. for the card draw. Yep. But this matchup, it's like, you want to use it for the death bite where you know they're setting up patrons, or you know yeah. they're setting up a kill. Definitely. All right. It does look like he is playing the Acolyte and just going face, trying to set up a favorable trade on board. He's going to get kind of punished yeah. here by the death bite, just picking off the Acolyte. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this feels like he wants to Despite maybe next turn. Set up the turn 5 Patron. But as we talked about, 
it almost seems better to go slower in this matchup rather than just going for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Demigod actually is the, he has uh, the Dragon Warrior. He runs the Fairy, the Yasera, mm -hmm. and Alexstrasza, along with the Black Ring Corruptors. Yeah, I was pretty surprised to see the Black Ring Corruptors in there, but if you can enable them, they're very powerful. Not a fan of the Dragon Warrior, Chucky? Right. Uh, I like the dragons themselves, the, the legendaries. I think we're going to see Harrison Jones here. He doesn't yeah. have a Brawl, so he doesn't have a really good way to deal with if it was Strike. some sort of like patron and coin whirlwind and then swing. Yep, he would be so. dead to patrons, so yeah, cannot risk that. If he had a way to deal with it, obviously then he could hold on to it, but he just doesn't. <laughs> Koyuki looks pretty unfazed by that, though. But definitely not happy to see it. I think he's a pretty calm guy overall. Yeah, really calm. He's like... Never really made too many facial expressions, and we've been watching him for quite a while. Yeah, did you just... see him holding that sword in the video? No, I didn't. I... Just, I don't know. No expressions. No expressions? That made it that much scarier. And wow. Yeah. What now? Because you can't make any reads on him. He's got no emotion. No, no. Yeah. You don't know what he's going to do with that sword. Nope. Or that axe. Could go face. You never know. <laughs> Could be a rogue axe. That axe. All right, he's saving the Accolade of Pain for two draws here instead yep. of just throwing it out there for the one. So I think that means after his uh, Death Bite got Harrison Jones, now he's switching gears here. He's going to take the yeah. matchup a little bit slower. He was willing to go for a very aggressive line if that's what seemed best, but obviously the Harrison very much countered that. Yeah, so now he's switching gears here on it. So what are you looking for here as the control warrior player? Are you just trying to like stall the game out until you can burst him down? Or is there a point where you can sort of um, start well, being aggressive. You always need to be pressuring like a little bit. If you're not pressuring at all, and you're just letting them just constantly armor pass, then eventually they're going to get their draw spell, and then they're going to have all the cards in the world, all the answers, and they're going to run you over. So you have to be pressuring. So I think it's much better to just get your six drops in the mid game and have a clear board and play six drops. Yeah. So. Yeah. It's, it can be a pretty big mistake sometimes for people to just take things super slow and just think that they can stall it out as if they were a face hunter. But the frothing berserker combo in the late game will almost always kill you. Yeah. yeah. So I, I like this play. He clears off the armor smith to play around execute, which is going to force Koyuki to take like five base damage if he wants to execute it or use one of his whirlwind effects, which are extremely crucial. Yep. He could get a draw off the whirlwind this turn though. Yeah, but there's only so many Whirlwind effects in your deck, and that is your damage point. That's yeah, he's already used uh, the Despite. He yeah. must be the first Whirlwind, and to our knowledge, he'd probably have two Whirlwinds left after that. Yeah, just the second Despite Whirlwind and the second actual Whirlwind Whirlwind. And he didn't get to choose when he used the Despite Whirlwind. Yeah. Because oh, so, yeah. he got uh, Harrison Jones, so it's kind of like he, he's minus one. He didn't get any value out of that whatsoever. His board was just completely empty, so... Yeah, I think the nightmare here for Koyuki is you just don't draw into more draw. That's really what he's wanting is just not actual cards. He just wants to draw. Yeah, uh, that's a pretty good draw there. He can cool Taskmaster for yep. that extra card and then coin out the execute. So I've looked at a lot of Grim Patron Warrior lists that actually only run one cruel Taskmaster. Is it yeah. is it like a clunky card? What's what's the reason behind this? Yeah, it's much clunkier than Inner Rage and Inner Age has been the common replacement for it. So a lot of people have been playing uh, two Inner Ages. So you can get those crazy patron turns on turn five where yeah. you have the Despite equipped and then you play patron, then you Inner Age it, so there's two on the board, and then you swing, and now there's four. Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Can't do that with Cruel Taskmaster. Dragon Gunnam's pretty perfect here. It fulfills the pressure we were talking about. It's seven damage, and it's Any not like the warrior can easily clear it, and it just clears the board. Yeah, very solid. Yeah, Demigod looks like he's in a pretty commanding position. Oh. But the tech shield block, wow. shield slam combination. Coming wow. up handy. <laughs> he's got him. Even so, if he didn't have the first one, he draws into the second. Yeah, without any whirlwinds, there might be merit to playing a frothing berserker here. But it is very easily answerable from Control Warrior. Yeah. It's, it's starting to run out of, like options to yep. make a big board here. He's using the Frothing Berserker, but he's not using it in a turn where he's putting on a lot of bursts. It's just, oh, it's a 3-4. Like, yeah. It's a spider tank right now. Yeah. And uh, since he's used uh, one of his or two of his Whirlwind effects and 
Um, his hand is pretty much just all it is is one of those Frothing Berserkers, one of those Grim Patrons. If Demigod gets into a position where he can start armoring up consistently and is not under any pressure, then this game could get out of hand for Koyuki pretty quickly. Yeah, the Shield Slam, it was a really efficient answer, but this deck isn't really about answering. Wow, he's going to take initiative with Ysera here. Whoa! Yeah, I'm surprised he didn't. Like, Shield Maiden and Shield Slam seem like a much more, you know, obvious and defensive play, but... Well, he needs an answer for Emperor as well. So if he just uh, Shield Maiden Shield Slams, then Emperor plus the other Shield Slam from Koyuki could be... <laughs> the other Shield <laughs> Slam. Man. Well, if they're running one, they're, they're running two. They're probably running two. Yeah. yeah. Yep, and he happens to have the second one. Ysera's not getting answered. Yeah, definitely not. That's for sure. Needs to be executed. Yeah, I like the aggressive line from Demigod here. It really puts on pressure, because that mm -hmm. extra Ysera card every turn is going to be really, really huge. Yeah. If you're Koyuki, you can just hope that he gets 10 Laughing Sisters in a row. Yeah. <laughs> you can hope. Can you kill 10 Laughing Sisters, though? Actually, Laughing Sisters get exponentially better the more you have. Yeah. So, like, the first card, okay, <laughs> Laughing Sister. That, that, I That's like a, how you the worst thought card. about this. But, like, <laughs> four Laughing Sisters, five Laughing Sisters. Yeah, like, you can't do anything. Like, once you that. put the fifth Laughing Sister on the board, it's like, okay, I give up, I lose. Wow. All right, I like and this line. Yeah, this is it. He's, he's like, if I'm going to win this game, we're going now. Yeah, he's got to race him immediately. So that is a really good uh, identification, I guess, of what the board state is and figuring out what to do there. Yeah. And I think now he really regrets throwing out that frothing. It's going to get in three and no more. Whereas with the whirlwind effects, it would get a lot more. Yeah. All right, so how much damage does he actually have next turn? If he just has Death Spite, Grim Patron, and the Frothing Berserker with the Well, he can't play all of them. Yeah. So he needs to draw, like, Emperor first. And I definitely don't think he has 24. Or he like need 20 from the minions, which is no, not happening. Yeah. Demigod also has the opportunity to potentially dream back his own Shield Maiden and play it again oh. for another five yep. life. Oh my and goodness. And he can play Armor Smith, Cruel Task, stuff like that. Game There's the life. Emperor you needed. Yep. So I think the nuts here is your Emperor next turn, you draw Whirlwind. Yeah. Seems to be about the best you can get. That's the plan for Koyuki. That's the plan. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so he's going to Shield Slam that. See if it works out. But Shield Slamming that actually subtracts one damage for him. Yeah. <laughs> but it. it Threatens to yeah. have a 5-5, five five potentially. That's not going to happen. We know there's a shield slam. Yeah. Yeah, it might be kind of desperation times for Koyuki here. So if Koyuki gets the whirlwind off the top, can he potentially have enough damage? That would be a lot of patrons. That'd be four? Four, pa four patrons. So that's and 12? Yeah. And the 16. And then six creatures... On his yeah. side, two on the other side, so I, plus eight on the Frothing wait, Berserker. The Frothing gives that different, would do it. different amounts each Whirlwind. Because that's, uh, that's 18 from your minions, and then two Whirlwinds for the Frothing Effect, which would just need to be eight, which I think you easily get with this. Well, the first Whirlwind is only five, and then yeah, the second Whirlwind true. is five, six. Yeah, which is above eight, so. Yeah. And Battle Rage. Battle Rage is going to be really nice. Yeah, yeah, if he draws Inner Rages here. Yeah, that'd be big. Two Inner Rages? <laughs> two Inner Rages would do it, I think. All right. Let's see what happens. So you go face first. Yeah, you yeah. have to swing face yeah, with the Death Bite. Come on, Swing man. for the fences, Koyuki. Smork. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Found the path. Inner Rages the draw here. Can he do I, it? We think he needs two. We're not totally sure. Good old sure. caster math. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Battle Rage number two is not going to do it. It's four around cards? two. Ouch. Nothing. Nothing. And that's the last of the frothings and the first of the patrons. But He's yeah. thinking if he goes face, he might just be dead, but I don't think he really has yeah, a Yeah, what, what else do you have? Yeah. yeah. And he is dead. We know there's a, a Grom Taskmaster on the other side. Yeah. Yep. So, I mean, unless Koyuki decides to trade... Yeah, I mean, he could trade both the, the patrons. Ooh. And trade, trade that way. Ouch. It's going to be not very much So he's going for out. the patron out here rather yeah. than the giant frothing. Yeah, because yeah. both his frothing berserkers are now gone, so... The issue is Timmy God hasn't really run out of resources whatsoever. Yeah. Oh, the Emerald Drake Blackwing Corruptor synergy. Dragon Warrior indeed. Dra yeah. 
Gasera's double the dragons. Oh, wow. What? He's gonna be able to kill both the patrons. Or he can kill the Warsong commander. He's got options. You can also just dream to get rid of one of them. Yeah, you can dream one of the patrons and then kill the Warsong commander. I like that better. Yeah. There's just so many ways that you can just <laughs> yeah. play this and still win, regardless of what Koyuki yeah. has. Koyuki, like, with both frothings down, you can't be too afraid. No. no. Yeah. Like, how much space is there on the board? Okay. That's how much damage you can do with, with Grim Page. Yeah, you should still definitely kill that Warsong Commander, because that guy is scary. Oh, okay. Oh. Uh, this makes sense. So, so you miss out on some armor, but you deny him a card. The patron back. Yeah. I don't mind it. Yeah, 16 is really safe when yeah. you know your opponent. I mean, he'd have to have Warsong Commander, second patron, in a rage. <laughs> like, just ridiculous stuff you know he doesn't have. Yeah. I mean, All he right. could Grom you first and then draw that stuff. Yeah. Something like that. We actually haven't seen Grom out of Koyuki's deck, and he only has six left. Wow. Maybe he doesn't run Grom. There's a lot of variations. It's a potential. This, we have seen this is a really fast list. He had to have cut something for Shield Block, Shield Slam. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's very true since the Shield Block, Shield Slam. And just like regular Slam is in there too. Okay. Yeah. No Grom would be kind of interesting. It would mean that he's more reliant on the yep. bigger combos. On the combo he, he already, already spent. He already <laughs> used. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. And at this point, if you're Demigod, you're almost just like getting information. Yeah. Because... Yeah. You're probably going to win. Koyuki has to win with this patron deck. Yeah. And if you get information like no Grom. Yeah, that's huge. That's really big. It's yeah. a, it's sort of like the opposite of the old last hero standing yep. where it would be more beneficial for um, for the winner to to con conceal information. Here, yeah. if you think you're going to lose the match, you might want to concede, especially if you're running a deck that's a little bit different, to yeah. try and conceal information. Yeah, I know a lot of players, especially at live events, Yeah, you really don't like to just concede. It just feels kind of wrong. Yeah. But sometimes it's right. It's sometimes it's actually correct. Set yourself up for more success later in the tournament. Let's yeah. go with the style Nefarian here. The style Nefarian. I don't know. I think I'm really concerned <laughs> that his cursor is over that intern yeah. button. <laughs> That's a bad place to rest <laughs> your cursor. Yeah, definitely. I move Drake coming down. I'm just playing all these Sarah cards. Mm -hmm. There is trouble. Yep. It's a lot of trouble. It's gonna be more Koyuki. trouble if more laughing sisters start coming to the party. Yeah. It's too bad you Sarah's gone. Too bad. Too bad. <laughs> this is just a rough hand. Yeah, I mean, does Koyuki even have Koyuki has a patron left, right? Yeah. So two he, cards left. That's it. Two? One of them's patron. Koyuki really? has two cards remaining. So yeah. I would say it's an inner rage and a patron. Yeah. yeah. I think with the fast list, you almost always run two inner rage. Like, does he... Like, he has enough damage if Demigod just went AFK and didn't do anything for the rest Ooh, of the game. Ooh, that's true. Yeah. But that's it. Good like, call. That's the only way, it seems. Because right now, even if he threw everything out on the board and went all in, he'd still only be able to do, what, no. seven damage? If he's able to get the Patron, Patron plus Inner Rage is 8, yep. and then if it's the other Inner Rage, then it's another 5 on top of that. Yep. 13. So 13 damage. But, uh, That's he's dead. Enough. Yeah, and he's dead. Mm -hmm. Demigod did not AFK. No. No, no. <laughs> Glad to see it, and Demigod throws out the well played. He's going to take game number 1 yep. over Koyuki. So there was a point in that game where Koyuki was on a draw to win. Yeah. And it looked like a dominant game from the Control Warrior. Yeah. Um, with that Battle Rage, if he had picked up, like, double Inner Rage, yep. uh, he would have won. Yeah. Or I believe. We, we think. He we was think. around the area know, of winning. I know the Whirlwind off the top would have yeah. been Yeah, enough. Whirlwind off the top would have been enough. It was within probably 10 points of damage of winning. So yeah, something like yeah. that. We'll just go ahead and say it was. Sure. All right, well... Um, He's still got the Freeze Mage left to find a victory with, and of course the Paladin to find a victory with. Yeah. yeah. I don't think Patron Warrior is going to have a hard time up against either of those decks. Right. We saw the uh, the Freeze Mage had extra freezes and less things that kill people, so uh, not very effective yeah, against not Patron Warrior. Not good against Warrior. Yeah. <laughs> you really need to kill him at some point. <laughs> yep. 
I think Malagos is a card that a lot of pros have thought is really good against Patron Warrior. Yeah. Gives you that extra reach you need to get yeah. through all the armor. Yeah, exactly. Because they only run uh, two executes in Patron Warrior. Yeah. So, uh, That's all their removal. They usually. They execute like Alex, and then they execute Antonitis, and nobody's thinking about Malagos. Then you yeah. drop that guy on the mm. table, and then you hit him for 100. Yeah, Koyuki <laughs> had shield slam. 100. So. Yeah, just the standard, like, Frostbolt, Ice Lance, Ice Lance, Fireball, whatever. Roughly 100 damage. Probably. Yeah. I mean, if the world champion says it's 100 damage. Yeah. We I mean, there's probably a combination of cards with Emperor that makes it 100 damage. Yeah. I'll sure. agree with you. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I don't know enough to refute it, <laughs> so I'm just going to go ahead and, and try and... I think the Warrior it. deck, Patron Warrior, can do 100. Uh, yeah, Patron Warrior can do 100, too. <laughs> So you think um, it's good for Koiki to just throw out the Patient Warrior once again? Yeah. Um, I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if he does. You can you can random, but at this point, Patron Warrior has two good matchups in front of it. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Information's not a huge deal at this point, and Koyuki agrees. He's just going to throw it out there. Uh, I believe this is a heavily, heavily Patron Warrior favorite matchup. Paladin yeah. is often really susceptible to things like Whirlwind, which Patron Warrior happens to run four of, basically. Yeah. So... And I didn't see anything in Demigod's Paladin list that really struck me as like, this is going to help the patron matchup so much. Yeah, it's so. No Azur Drake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or Blood Mage Thalnos was yeah. a Blood card Mage that Thalnos people were, actually... were playing with to uh, try and get the six mana Blood Mage Thalnos concert combination, which yeah. effectively clears patron boards. Even just two equalities, but. Yeah, the thing about Paladin with equality is uh, you don't actually need the finisher of equality to deal with patrons, really. You can just equality, and then they can't replicate anymore. <laughs> that's true. That's so very true. So they're just sitting there with a bunch of three ones. <laughs> yeah. So it can kind of work out sometimes, but you do take a lot of damage, so you're going to need some heals with that. But Yeah. I think one of the main issues is even if you clear everything they have to offer, how do you play around frothings? Like, yeah, exactly. If, because Paladin doesn't pressure enough. They mm -hmm. just draw their whole deck. Koyuki's playing a lot of draw. He drew 29 cards that last match. So yeah. Like, He's going to get into those combos that hit for like gonna be rough. 30. Well, there you have it. Double equality being yep. run by Demigod. So probably a good tick choice for what he's seeing. This, this sort of uh, is a point towards um, when I was talking to him earlier. He said, oh, his lineup is definitely good against Handlock. Double equality is fantastic against Handlock. So yeah, really fantastic. one of those last two cards was a no mission winner, by the way. Whoa. And the other one had to be a Grim Patron. Yeah. So, so one inner rage in this list. One inner rage, no Grom. No Grom. Interesting. Very Intense. interesting. A lot of cycle. Really yeah. looking for those combos. It sort of brings me back to, I believe it was Chalky playing against uh, Chang in one of the Legendary Series weeks where he was yeah. playing a, like a, a heavy, like a miracle uh, yep. Grim Patron Warrior where he ran Azur Drakes, no Mission Venters, pretty much a shield blocks. All draw and all in a combos. In the last like 10 turns of the game, all Chucky did was just pass his turn. Armor pass, armor the pass. The combo did 46 damage. Yeah. So. <laughs> so he just made sure he stayed above that, and eventually he won because he just didn't have enough. So. Yeah. Crazy match. Yeah. Interesting. Lots of heal in this Paladin. I've heard some of the players that did some research saying Demigod plays what they call Heladin. So maybe like a Guardian of Kings in this list as well. Yeah. Lots of heals. What about double lay on hands? I think it's more double heal bot, one lay on hands. Yeah, you can't really do much with the lay on hands in the same <laughs> turn. Like, yeah. it, draw, it heals you for a lot, sure, and then you have two mana left, so what are yeah. you going to do? So, like we talked about, I mean, the War Song and the double frothing's already there, and the Gnomish is going to keep him drawing. Well, do you play the frothing here? Yeah, this is something that uh, your teammate Zlay always talks about, like, you have to kind of know when to play it as a unit versus when to use it as a combo. And to me, this feels kind of like a turn you might save it because it, it easily dies to coin true silver. Yeah, I like it. I like saving it. Koyuki agrees, so he's going to have a lot of combo damage later. Yeah, the downside is, though, now he doesn't have to coin true silver. Now he can coin piloted shredder. Yep. And guess what? He's following another piloted shredder right after yeah, that. Yeah. That's a lot of pressure really quick. Yeah, this is actually... Probably ideal for the Paladin. We've talked about how Piloted Treader is one of the best cards against Warrior. Yeah, and this, Koyuki does not have a weapon here to sort of react. Yep. So he's got this Shield Slam, but uh, nothing really to follow that up. Could slam it. I uh, still hold it. Committing so to we're committed to the yeah. armor, yep. Wow. So if he can live, then the uh, 
the war song commander grim patron is going to be huge in retaking this board yeah he has to be able to live though and uh demigod drawing a zombie chow is not going to help with his aggression push <laughs> no not at all <laughs> this seal is of the, light perhaps though yeah this is where the heal it in part doesn't help when your opponent's the one you have to kill yeah, yeah like they're not trying to kill you they're just like okay kill me yeah and you're like well i can't really you know, heal you to death yeah. And the longer you sit back and just wait, the, the more afraid that you get for big combos. Especially as a paladin, at what point do you say, well, using my hero power is sort of a liability? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That definitely becomes a problem later in the game. Yeah, at this point, though, you need it. You need to have that pressure. Mm hmm So, do you think that he starts trying to play these guys as as creatures, or just um, keep with the drawn armor? So you could shield slam the shredder, which looks like what he's gonna do. Leaves you with enough mana to slam if you want. So, like, if he got some ridiculous two drop, which it looks like a three two is gonna be good enough. Yeah, yeah. like a recombobulator. But if he got like a whirling zapomatic, you know, you're not yeah. dead. You just slam it. Uh, knife Juggler is another really high damage one. Belcher yeah. is a huge draw here to just keep up the pressure. It's really important that he can just constantly keep drawing on turret yeah. and keeping up pressure. I just find it hilarious, all this pressure talk. Warriors at 31. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and Emperor is the best draw in the deck here. Yeah, yeah. you want to hit... easily the yeah. best draw. You want to hit your Frothings and you want to hit your Warsong Commander. And he hit all three. Oh, yeah. maybe even a Grim Patron or two. Oh, oh yeah, look at that. Good. Oh, there's four. <laughs> so, heart of the cards with Koyuki here, I guess. Yeah. Well, you guys were talking earlier. He's a, He plays a lot of different card games. Yeah, Pretty much all of them. He's played his fair share of cards. Yeah. yeah. It was very good of him saving that frothing. We saw he thought about that a lot on turn three, and it looks like it's going to pay off for him because the Paladin is just not able to pressure him enough yeah. to make Wonder. anything happen here. Mm -hmm. Even with Double Shredder and Belcher. Yep. It, it kind of punished him last game. He used the Frothing as a unit, and it got him three damage. And yeah. that's not what you want out of that card. You want, like, 20. Yeah. So, <laughs> he does take five from the Emperor, but he has a lot of heals. And this is the point you were talking about, TJ, where do you press that button? Yeah, yeah no, it's getting it. to that point. Do turns, you want that one one? Turn seven, he played Emperor Thor said, I don't think you do, because what if he is able to clear off the Sludge Belcher? He ta he can attack everything has less than, than three mm. attacks. So. Yeah, so it you could be like... He Consecrate to follow it, though. Yeah, could be Warsong into Inner Rage Patron. Yeah. That clears your whole board and leaves a bunch of patrons. Mm. So he holds off. Yeah. Ooh. Wow. That's good. That's a scary yeah. hand. Yeah, that's, that's a lot of damage. That's like one more whirlwind effect, and that's like lethal. That's yeah. at least four damage in his hand. <laughs> at least. For sure. Yeah. And execute to get through something. So it's... Do you just develop the death bite here? Uh, Are you afraid of like Harrison Jones? I think you definitely attack. Yeah, you attack with it. Yeah. Even if it gets Harrison Jones, it's still... It's yeah, the Belcher. Still kills the Belcher. Uh, still start throwing things into the probably one run attack the Belcher stuff. in first, but uh, Emperor is not a bad draw. Yeah, but the problem is it's not reducing warrior cards; it's reducing paladin cards. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he can already almost play most of his hand. Oh, yeah, his hand's not great. No. Yeah, Doctor Boom would have been better. Something like that. Mm. Yeah, of course. Yeah, Dr. Boom on seven is pretty good. Justice. <laughs> so I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, he's going to go for the Emperor, though. I mean, that's what he has. Yeah, I mean, nothing else is good. Do you play Zombie Chow? I don't think you're Are ever... you committed to never playing it? I think you're just committed to that's just never hitting the table. <laughs> it's not meant for this matchup. Yep. I'm curious what the Seal of Light is put in for. Like, uh... is it for hunters to, like, pick off, like, a knife juggler or something apparently it's for handlock it <laughs> well it does add a small amount of burst yeah that's surprise two damage because everyone plays yeah. around six damage from yep. paladin and then you yeah. just sneak in there with that uh, seal of light yeah i have true silver consecrate seal of light gotcha <laughs> exactly yeah well this Even is like i said we're like a whirlwind effect away from lethal 
Wait, maybe he has it. Is this? Is this lethal? I didn't count. I don't think it is. Oh, he's got the cool test, so the charges. The ch so he's gonna get the slime. seven each. Or no, is he gonna go face? Yeah, he should go face with the yeah, weapon. Yeah, he trades right? that and then goes face with the weapon. So and he... that's that's six each. Yeah, six each. Oh, nope, no, he's killing after. Right. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Didn't think so. That's how I play group page more. I usually count about halfway. Wait. And then I wait to see if my second guy has. Was the that that was lethal, right? Uh, that's six each. That's twelve each. That's twenty-four. So if he went face, he would have won. That's an interesting play. Koyuki's not happy with himself. I think in the under the same circumstances, the board was exactly the same. I would have lethaled him there. <laughs> I think that would have been a better line. But. <laughs> so wait, wait a second. Okay. Normally that's not a big deal. You're like, okay, kill him next turn. But He's got no damage in hand. Quality consecrate. Seal, seal of life. Seal of life. <laughs> oh my <laughs> goodness. <laughs> it's why it's here. It's happening. And then he can follow that up with Guardian Kings. It's like the mm, Guardian that, of Kings primer. That's the play. And Koyuki is just that is that's not happy rough. whatsoever. He even took off his glasses. I've never seen him without his glasses. Like we're talking about how calm he is, but yeah. when you make a huge mistake like that, yeah, yeah, in this type of circumstance, and now yeah. look. Good thing the sword is nowhere near him this time. He's at seven. Yeah, it's it's rough when you make mistakes. I think you just play out stuff here. Yeah, you just pressure it. You play BGH, maybe. Yeah. Well, BGH dies to slam. I'd go with Aldor. I'd go with BGH. Well, then you can slam. Uh, you can't kill him with armor up anyway. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Mm. I don't know. I've made huge mistakes like that before. We've all done yeah. it. It's really rough. It just happens. Like, sometimes little things skip your mind. Yeah. So... It's um, nothing on Koyuki. It's I'll just tough. And it's going to show how much of a player he is if he's able to push through it yeah. and overcome it. Yeah, he played pretty quickly. He might have been thinking that, oh, I can just th throw damage in wherever and not have to actually sit down and count this exactly. But yeah. I think his best chance might be to draw Warsong next turn, the second one in his deck. Because if you Grim Patron here, you, you concede. Yeah. You're not going to win. Yeah, he should definitely try his hardest to do that. I think you press the button and you pass. And it's a 1 in 17, down from a 100% chance to win the game. Not quite the best odds for him now. Yeah. And we talked about uh, wins that mean a lot and wins that don't mean so much. This is a win that means a lot. Yeah, this means a lot. Like, Paladin is not going to win every game. Yeah, Paladin is uh, probably the weakest against Koyuki's lineup because Koyuki has the Rogue and the Patron Warrior. Yeah, Koyuki gonna throw out that inner rage. So now going for a long game, I guess. And oh, Tyrion off the Tyrion, top. Tyrion, Guardian of Kings, either one. Brutal. Yeah. Put an end to that. Put your yeah, face I like Tyrion. Line. And this is the nightmare for Koyuki. Telling Koyuki to put his face in the light. For He's this? gonna set up lethal with the zombie chow. Yep. It is actually getting <laughs> oh played this gosh. game. There we go. All right, what the a nightmare. comes out, and after a miss lethal, Koyuki. <laughs> He's going to fall in game number two. Now he's on the ropes. He's down two to zero. Yeah. Somewhere out in the crowd, there's a man crying justice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. For all my anti-Grim Patron Warrior brothers out there. <laughs> oh, man. Oh. All right. Well, the only deck that Demigod still has to win with is that Freeze Mage. He's given himself three opportunities now, picking up two victories here. Yep. Yeah. So... Koyuki has to win with Warrior, not too hard. Mm -hmm. uh, Hunter, you know, not the hardest ever. Rogue's yeah, pretty hard. <laughs> Hunter, Hunter is way harder than Rogue. You he's, think Hunter's harder than Okay. If he's not running Antonitis and he's not running Emperor, which we didn't see. We didn't see either. I'm really curious. Yeah, yeah, like, I'm curious what is in well. this Freeze Mage deck that so, let him put two Kona Colds in? If he has all this late game, Kona Cold is not the greatest against Rogue. It really isn't. It's like, it doesn't kill anything. It doesn't... Generally, I've fatigued a lot of rogues out, though, but he does yeah. have the South Sea. Fatiguing so. a rogue, though, Kona Cold's not going to let you fatigue no. a rogue. It just stalls one turn. Yeah, it stalls one turn, which yep. doesn't really accomplish much against a rogue. You either want to be killing their minions or killing them. Those are the two different ways you win against rogue. You kill every single minion they have to offer, then they can never hit their oils and they just die. Yeah. Or you uh, kill them and then they're dead. I don't think he's going to kill the rogue, actually. Yeah, With he doesn't have Earthen enough burn. And, yeah. and Healbot and Lothab. Yeah. You can't take an aggressive line, I think. So now he needs to try and figure out how to kill every minion using Kona Cold. Yeah. So All that's right. kind of interesting. <laughs> well, before we jump into the next match, our host for the day, Frodan, has actually been competing against the world. 
today. He's been hanging out with some people in the crowd. You can see Raynad there next to him as well. Uh, he's been uh, fighting against some of the some of the other players who are here to enjoy some Hearthstone. And actually, Dan is is having a little trouble. He's down 0-1 against the world right now. So he needs all the help he can get. He called over his Tempo Storm <laughs> brother, Raynad, to help him. They're trying to tag team it. But you can see on your screen there, the world who plays for Team Archon. I really wow. like the world's lineup. Um, that is... Uh, you know, it's really innovative bringing three of the same class yep. in Conquest. Mm -hmm. But I think Hunter, good pick. Yeah, oh, look at Dan. He is he is really upset. He might want to queue up some Hunter of his own. Oh, he's actually playing Shaman. Is it Mech Shaman now? Yeah, I, I, I can't even see his cards. But you uh, know what? Good luck to Dan today. He's going to need all the help he can get. I'll put my money on the Hunters. Yeah, me too. Yeah, Hunters oh, pretty good. Dan, he just ex exclaimed <laughs> and, and uh, had a little bit of a fit of rage over there in the, in the player area. Probably uh, just got smorked down once again. Yeah, playing against all hunters will get to you like that. That's really yeah. rough. Yeah, it's like ladder. Yeah, like ladder. Yeah. That's the world, right? <laughs> That's the world. <laughs> the world is the ladder. All right, well, it looks like we are going to jump into the next match between Demigod and Koyuki. Once again, Koyuki is down 2-0 uh, to zero in this matchup. Demigod has three opportunities to win with this freeze mage. Yep. Yeah. So Koyuki going again with the Warrior. Even after the little mishap, he's still getting up and trying to play Warrior again. So uh, hopefully he's able to regroup and play uh, like he was playing the previous series. He played really, really well in his first series of the day today. And uh, I'm, it's interesting that he actually made a mistake like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were talking about how the patron turns. You don't really have enough time to yeah. count. Yeah, the rope did hit that turn. And so. that showed. Yeah. It, something that we haven't talked about yet is sometimes being in that little player room can be a little bit intimidating. Yeah. Um, there's like white noise being pumped so the players can't hear. They have these big headsets on. The only people in that room are like the referee who's standing off to the back and then the person you're playing against. Yeah. So really you only have like your own thoughts that are yeah. like keeping you busy and like the attack animations. Yeah. And so you, you sort of, uh, sometimes you can get lost in your own thoughts and miss things that you, that you, sh uh, that you shouldn't have. So it can be tough. Yeah, yeah, it's really tough. It's definitely a lot harder than it looks. I've been there before, and like I'm sure everybody that's played like uh, competitive Hearthstone has made some stupid mistake in their life. So you can't be too hard on anybody for making any sort of silly mistake. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, what are you looking for in this matchup as, as far as the, uh, the Freeze Mage goes in order to take your patron? Not all of your secrets like this. Yeah. That's not what you want. A lot of these matchups tend to go to fatigue, and the warrior pushes the mage to a really low health total, but doesn't kill them, and then they fatigue out through the ice blocks. Yeah. So ice block sometimes is a dead card. Yeah, sometimes it does absolutely nothing, and the warrior just rides off of its armor to win in fatigue. And he drew two ice blocks. Yeah, that's... Not good. There's no matchup where you want to draw two ice blocks. Generally, you never want to draw ice block Ooh. ever. You just want to yeah. get it off scientist. I really wouldn't play armor smith here. I don't know if you're just faking that. I would think so. Yeah, you want to save armor smith for the later stages of the game when you can combine it with a whirlwind effect and a large board to gain tons of armor. Right. Especially when you know your opponent plays like acolytes. He does have the weapons to kill those. You guys, keep in mind, for those of you who may just now be joining us, this is the winner's match of Group A. So both of these players won their first match in Group A. The winner of this match moves directly into the round of eight on Sunday, so the playoff stage. And since both these guys have won their match today, uh, the loser, so if Koyuki falls in this game, actually still has another chance. They'll just move down to the deciding match of the group stage. So uh, he won't be out of it if he, if he drops this match. Um, but I'm, I, I'm sure that getting that 2-0 victory out of groups is something that players really, really strive for because it makes your day a lot easier. Yeah, and yeah. then they would even have a rest day tomorrow. Yeah. And this would be a huge statement for Demigod to come out as relative unknown and sweep the first group. Yeah, it would be very impressive. Wow, this Freeze Mage draw. Yeah. That is just gross. Oh um, the cards you do want none of those are the ones we literally haven't seen from his deck. Yeah. Emperor and Archmage yeah. are critical. We haven't seen That's those true. in That's his very deck true. Yet. We don't know if he's even running them, but uh, he needs to start cycling off that Acolyte and draw towards them. So I'd like to see the Acolyte ping here. Yep. I'm thinking, okay, so what cards would he cut to make his matchup better against Handlock, which he said he was targeting? I'm like, 
Arguably, J today is a fantastic against yeah, handlock. Yeah, it's really good against we, it. Emperor is the nuts against handlock. Yeah, yeah. we didn't see any anti handlock cards in this list. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea how his lineup beats handlock, but. That's what he told me. Maybe he's trying to trick you so you would say it here. Whoa. So that everyone else would. It was when I was in the players' lounge and there was people ah. eavesdropping over us. Demi God. So maybe. He's being sneaky. He raised his voice a little bit. He said, Oh, I'm trying to counter handlock. Wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely. That makes sense. Because it just very coincidentally, it seems, really is good against Hunter. <laughs> yeah. <all of> <laughs> just really good against Hunter. Yeah. <laughs> like seal of lights, <laughs> double cone of cold. Like, mm -hmm. there's no way he wasn't thinking about Hunter at all. Mm -hmm. Think he's going to arcane intellect, right? Yeah, yeah, drawing two cards. Pretty good. Could have done that Don't first, done. but I mean, I think he's almost always going to ice block there. Yeah. What? It's not like Mad Scientist where you want to proc it first or use the secret first because it really doesn't matter. Yeah, he drew yeah. three secrets this game, not what you like. And no Mad Scientist. Yeah, that happened in his in his other games too. No, no Mad Emperor Scientist is pretty good. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is yeah? It? <laughs> when is you that got, good? When you got ten cards in your hand. Even the coin uh, will cost no, negative yeah, one. Not, it's not going to reduce mana on the coin. Well, it does. Awful play. If... If you get Lothib, <laughs> the coin's only going to cost four. Yeah, it costs negative one after the Emperor Torsen. So, in. you coin for four. To gain one back. <laughs> to gain one back. Is there a situation that's good? Well, if you need to, like, combo an Eviscerate or something. Or tech for or check for counter spell before warrior. you're lethal. Yeah, but as a warrior, <laughs> no. There's got to be no. a situation. I can't really. Uh, maybe proc a wild pyromancer to enable battle rage. <laughs> Whoa. Like, or super hilarious BM. Yeah, something. <laughs> yeah. There you go. The four mana coin BM. Yeah. That otherwise would not be possible without Emperor Thorson. The coin for four mana, then emote oops, <laughs> and then kill him anyway. Nice. Oh, man. Did you just fireball here? Uh, you probably can't leave up a 10 card Emperor twice. Yeah, it's generally bad. Like, all of almost all of the warrior cards cost two or more, mm -hmm. so the second activation will get a lot of mana still. Yeah. Um, it sucks because Fireball is six damage. It's not going to the face. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, you could Cone of Cold and Ice Lance. Yeah. Um, I would have used mana and, more efficiently, too. And Cone fact, of Cold's not that useful in this matchup because it only does one damage and it, it could spawn more grim patrons. I mean, you could set it up for AoE the following turn. Yeah, I think I would have liked that play, kind of. Looking back, he could have also, uh, instead of arcane electing, or rather, yeah, instead yeah. of ice blocking he last turn, doomsayed. he could have doomsayed preemptively mm, yeah. going into the turn six, which is a pretty common play. Yeah. Uh, just to deny that Emperor Thor is sent on curve. Sure. So he's thinking he needs to armor up as much as possible. Because right. at the end of the day, you, you guys said it comes down to sort of a fatigue matchup where armor, I mean, it's it's effective life um, yep. in advance. Yeah, and he already got a fireball out. We don't even know if he plays Archmage. Like, yeah. if It'd he doesn't so play Archmage, weird this if he game's doesn't... over already. Yeah, this game's done if he doesn't have Archmage. How many cards did he have left in that game when we didn't see Archmage? Was it like three? Well, we saw him he play two, two games. games where he went through 20 cards both games. The, the main issue we had was we saw... Blizzard, two Kona Colds, two Blizzards. Bot, yeah, two Blizzards. Two Blizzards. One Flame like, Strike. What? what could you cut? Yeah, that's the that was part. That was the main question. There's one Loot Hoarder, because we've seen it very low frequency. You know, Crips, what Crip thought it would be was second Ice Lance, and we haven't ruled that out yet. It's weird. <laughs> yeah. That is but pretty weird. I've learned but never to doubt the wait, crit. Ice Lance is so good against Handlock. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's one of the best cards against Handlock. Yeah. None of these cards make know. sense have against seen, Handlock. I don't know. We have seen Blood Mage Thanos, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. We had to have. Actually, that's wait, just better wait, wait, than wait. Loot Hoarder. We haven't. We've seen one Loot Hoarder, no Blood Mage. So far. <laughs> what if he doesn't have the dust <laughs> to play Blood Mage Thanos? I mean, he's <laughs> an up and comer through the opens, maybe. <laughs> he's oh, just man. showing y'all you don't even need fancy legendaries to yeah. win. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good story, then. Yeah. This is yeah. the best story of the tournament. What are the cards in Demigod's Freeze Mage deck? Yeah. Maybe, maybe in Hawaii, the types of handlocks are different. Yeah. <laughs> maybe you need that Seal of Light. Well, maybe. Maybe they're... Have we seen two Ice Barriers? No, he, he drew Ice Block off of Scientist very frequently. Yeah. Okay. That could be it. We're, we will find out pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, man. Like, he, he drew 100% of the time he got Ice Block off Scientist. Such a fun guessing game. So he can play most of his hand here. 
Yeah. The interesting thing about Battle Rage against Freeze Mage is you don't want to Battle Rage for too much. Like, maybe one or two. Yeah. Or just Battle Rage for, yeah, like one card. I mean, if you draw it really late, you don't Battle Rage. Mm -hmm. The cheaper War Song Commander here. Yeah, the War Songs are actually extremely important. Yeah, definitely. That's it's your only way to deal damage. Especially with no Grom. Yeah. That those are your only sources of damage. Looks like he's going to make a lot of patrons here. Will we get oh, a secret? Oh, no, he's going to go with the Battle Rage first. Two card Battle Rage. No that's secret, that's it. No, all right, so okay. there's, there's one Ice Barrier. One yeah. Ice Barrier. So that sort of... Which is bad against Hunter. Yeah. The first yeah, thing that's that awful done. against Hunter. <laughs> Why does he have two Kona Colds then? Big, big handlock boards. Uh, well, I mean, it freezes giants, I guess. Yeah. The early giant, you can stall them out a lot. Handlock is one of the easier classes to play around cards like Kona Cold, though. Still no Arc yeah. Mage. Still no Emperor. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Not crossed off quite yet. Yeah. And the Pyroblast, which is weird, because I would definitely cut Pyroblast before cutting it, Knight is a Emperor. Mm -hmm. So this makes a lot of sense from Koyuki that he went for the, um, or the commander turn right before the Alex from his opponent. Yeah, because if it's, is a, if your opponent Alexes you, that means that they don't get to clear your board. Yeah, he's getting uh, a lot of armor this turn. Yep. Both fireballs gone. Uh, we know Demigod only has 14 points burned in his hands. Yeah, that's not a lot. Interesting, he didn't play the Warsong Commander that turn. He could have got a lot of damage in with that first Warsong. The, the frothing. Very frothing. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I think the initial goal was like, oh, I'm just going to try and gain as much as the armor possible this turn. And yeah, the, now the he sees the frothing and he's, he's like, like, wait oh, a no. minute. <laughs> so another small misstep. Going to cost him two damage. Yeah, he doesn't seem very phased by it. Yeah, so this one's good. not nearly as big of a deal. Yeah. Um, still in very good position. Uh, yeah, he's going to want to trade into the Alex first, maybe. Yep. Yeah. Oh, and here comes Rope. Yeah, he's running We've out of time We talked about here. this. This is... Oh, he's going to miss the Cruel Taskmaster. He's going to save it for the next sketchy. frothing. How much did... You should attack with the largest first to the smallest. But he's just going right to left. Get in there. And... Yeah, with the, the Cruel Taskmaster, he could have added another three, four, five damage. Uh, would have popped the block. It would have popped the block, so... Yep. Even if he had just played the Frothing Berserker first. Yeah, Again, even if he played the Not a huge deal. But <laughs> not a huge, not deal, a huge to deal to pop the Popping block. The block <laughs> that's pretty big. Yeah, well, but... It's, okay, it's not as bad the as The Freeze Mage not has winning. no pressure right now. None. Yeah, it's not as bad as the last one, but you gotta pop the block here. Yeah. yeah. So already, the first patron player of the tournament, we're seeing Rope, a huge deal. Yeah, patron's not easy. There's <laughs> a lot of decisions, and when you're under pressure, it can be really tough to think, to do things yeah. fast enough. Yeah. That's why, uh, like, Zelay and, like, me, like, Zelay has told me, he's like the patron warrior of Archon, really. He's right. our guy. Uh, yeah. He's just kind of like, yeah, just, like, go for it. Yeah, start you, doing you stuff. You just have to go for it. Yeah. You just start doing things, and if it ends up looking like it's probably lethal, then try and kill him. Yeah. <laughs> you lock Zelay in his room and say, you better play a hundred patron warrior games today. No, he does it with enjoyment. Oh, okay. Yeah. All three That's servers. Good. That guy's crazy. <laughs> he loves just grinding patron warrior all day. Well, I mean, at the Legendary Series uh, Season 1 Finals, Zelay uh, took third or fourth place. He was uh, the third or fourth place tied, and yeah. he actually put Frothing Berserker in his control war. That's how much he likes the card. So. Yeah, and he ran deck like uh, Combo Lock, which is like uh, with the mm. Arcane Golems and the Power Golems yeah, and yeah. Faceless. So he loves the bursty damage counting. Yeah. So. I'm just happy we get to see him draw more cards. That yes, way we get to figure the this out. The chance of him having those two cards gets smaller and smaller. Yeah. It's at like 1% chance that he has those cards now. It's I think it's like probably with between 5 and 10%. But oh, well, I see how it is. We haven't seen it like in three games of going through 20 plus cards. Yeah. He needs this Doomsayer to resolve. And right now there actually isn't an answer to it. Yeah. Well, he could draw an answer. That is but... crazy. I think you have to battle rage. Whoa. Well, now he's on the back <laughs> but foot. Then you can die in fatigue. You can die in fatigue, but if if this Doomsayer resolves, you're really mad. Are you, though? What? You'd probably win in fatigue anyway, right? Probably. So that's kind of the option Rock you have to wait here. Oh, wait. He would have had too many cards. Oh, okay. okay. Could have also coined first. Oh, the shield slam! That'll do it for sure. Yeah. Wow. That's a lot of armor. That's potential. a lot of non-removal cards. Like he missed both executes, oh, only drew one shield slam. He has like six cards left and half of them are removal. He 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. So as the freeze mage, the freeze mage has enough stalls to kind of no freeze this Can board for a while. Can you pop this turn with like a slam on something? Uh, you'd have to do. Oh, if he played the frothing first and then slammed oh, something. Man. Yeah. He yeah, missed... but he couldn't have done that. Yeah, could have instead of the cruel taskmaster. Oh no, because he didn't no, have a slam he did that yet. Before. Yeah, he didn't have a slam yet. So there's. Yeah, there's, there's no, no way to way. pop here. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Yeah, that's kind of unlucky. Maybe guy looks a little bit stressed. Oh, I would be too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he needs something to deal with his board. Yeah, he. And he's getting popped if he can't freeze the face. So oh, we can count that out. There's blood mage. Yeah. Two plus one is three. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> so Blizzard clears the board. Okay, but it gives him seven armor. Yeah. Well, what are you going to do, right? <laughs> yeah. and, it, and you get popped. So and that's, you get popped. I mean, unless you ice lance face. You just drew uh, seven you... cards. Uh, okay, we can get a card count here. I believe uh, nine and six. six. Nine and six. Yep. Yeah, so it's not enough for the freeze mage to really win in fatigue. No. no. So He plays heal bot. He already used Alex. Yeah, usually you have to Alex right. yourself. Yeah, and then heal bot, usually. But then usually you have to Alex them to have enough damage. So it's like, well, what, what can you do? When you Alex them, usually you commit to the burn plan. Yeah, so the you, burn plan never works in this spot. Yeah, the burn plan's done here, so there's no way. So <laughs> if you're not going to be able to kill them with burn, then you have to commit to Alexing yourself and then using the heal bot on yourself. Otherwise, you just can't win in fatigue because you guys start fatiguing at a relatively around the same time, and then uh, they just have 30 armor. Yep. He's uh, getting towards that point. Yeah. He's got another armor smith still. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So... We talked about information, and at this point, Demigod's pretty much out of this game. Yeah, he could concede here. So, like, I probably wouldn't give away too much at this point. You're dead. Yeah, if he is <laughs> running Antonitis and Emperor, he should hide him. But uh, I really want to see him. Yeah, I just want to see him draw them. <laughs> yeah. Just please have them in your deck. <laughs> They're pretty good cards. They're really good. Well, so far, he hasn't needed them, so... Yeah, he's, he's probably thinking that his choice was justified. If that is the choice that he Whoa. decided to make, he's using, sketchy here. Using the Warzone commander is sketchy here because that heal bot's going to come into play. Yeah, and, because uh, he could have popped without it. Yeah, he could he pop, just, he just four X him in the face. Yep. I think his plan is just to gain absurd amounts of armor. Like I, I, I don't think anything else is being factored. Mad in. scientist. Sure. I think it's a game plan that's going to work. I guess. Yeah. But Emperor, there it is. There's Emperor. He runs Emperor. <laughs> Seven cards left. So there has to be an Archmage. There just there's has gotta to be. be. Yeah. yeah. They, they go in pairs, so I've heard. Oh. Oh, yeah. Cool. Where do they travel in pairs at? Freeze Mage. Freeze Mage? That's <laughs> just a place. <laughs> the mystical land of Freeze Mage. <laughs> well, there you go. We've hit the 30 armor mark. 31 armor. TJ's over here rubbing his hands. I like, love oh, armor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Armor is my favorite thing. Why is that? I wasn't prepared for that <laughs> question. <laughs> it just is, okay? Okay. Don't question it. Yeah. Well, you can play mm. Emperor Thorsan here, but it doesn't. I, I would hide it. I would much. hide it. Yeah. I. Yeah. It hasn't been drawn in any of your other Freeze Mage games. Mm -hmm. Why well, show it now? I would just try and see how high we can get his armor. Just for fun. <laughs> Just for fun. Yeah. Reverse kill him. Yeah. You know, I don't care about, like, actual real-life fatigue on myself for playing a lot of Hearthstone and maybe making mistakes. I just feel like seeing how much armor I can give him. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, Ice Lance him. What if, potentially, like, you give him enough armor that, like, uh, you know, numbers get, like, too big and then, like, the bit oh, wraps yeah. around or whatever? Okay. And then it turns negative and they die? New wind sort condition. Of thing. <laughs> New Something like that. Just go for that out. Yeah. We actually have we actually have people from the Blizzard team here in the audience, and I can I saw them all just scurry out of the door <laughs> because they're like, oh no, they figured it out. <laughs> Wait, don't draw. Why? <laughs> I don't think he can lose. <laughs> What's he drawing towards though? Why? He's, I don't know. Maybe see how much fatigue he can take before he wins. <laughs> <laughs> I like how this game is like a joke now for both players. Oh, there's two Ice Lances. All right. Crip, you were wrong. Sorry. Um, still, you have to see Antonitis. Yeah. I'm a little worried for him. So there's one Loot Hoarder, one Barrier. That's...
pretty much what he cut and for second Kona Cold, second Eel Bob, or second Kona Cold and first Eel Are you guys sure Bob. there were two blizzards? No. No. Okay. I, I only saw one. You know We've what, only seen one this game. I'm not sure of anything games too. anymore. I don't even know. Okay. All right. It might just be one loot hoarder, one blizzard, one heal bot, one you could, or two Kona Colds. You could pyroblast that armor smith to send a message. Mm. It's worth considering. Get out of my game. Yeah. You and your 37 armor. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. So what? Five cards from six, five or six cards remaining for uh, for Demi got here with the mage. Yeah, I think five maybe. I'm not sure. And Koyuki at two or one. Yeah, I think the only reason he would stay nope. in the game would be, without oh, no. conceding, would be if he had uh, the Archmage Antonidas. Do you Ice Lance him again? Yeah, but you can't. If you're Emperoring here, you can't hope to win with Antonidas because you're not Antonidas in cards. But... And he knows just this isn't going to resolve because Shield Slam. Yeah. So we are going for the give him as much armor as possible plan. Maybe it wraps around. Well, he's out of cards, so maybe Demigod thinks that. He might be able to pull out a miracle victory with fatigue. I don't know. It, a lot of players in in these circumstances, you'll just, you know you you don't want to give up. Yeah. You know, why? So. Koyuki is just you know jamming through all his stuff. Flame strike off the top. Flame strike off the top. Pops the block. Heal block. Yeah. Good work. Huh? Yeah. But he's going to develop after the flame strike is the problem. <laughs> we don't talk about He's going to develop three damage, <laughs> yeah. actually. Yeah, exactly. but those actually kill him. Yeah, but his three damage, that kills the mage first. No, because he heal bots. Oh, because he heal bots. Yeah. No, oh, wrong, wrong, order. Order. Oh, wrong order. Oh, well. well Man, get... Demigod is the worst at drawing cards in the right <laughs> order. He can pyroblast the, uh, the frothing. Emperor's always at the bottom. Mad Scientist never at the top. Yeah, never lucky. Yet he's still 2-0 up in a series and had a victory in his first match. Maybe he's a pretty good player. I, <laughs> I would definitely say so, Jockey. All right, so he's gonna develop Emperor, so if, sort of force a trade. But the other shield slam, he if knows. If he does have another Blizzard, this enables Hillbot Blizzard. Ah, that's what he's doing. That makes sense. I was gonna say or, he knows. Or Chronicle. That works. Yeah, true. But. <laughs> Actually, never mind. It doesn't really work with patrons. Yeah, Chrono Cold doesn't work with patrons. So it needs to be the second blizzard. So second blizzard off the top. That is the only out here. Or Frost Nova if he has another one. Uh, no, I, I don't think he's think used he does. both. Yeah. I don't know if it's really an out, to be honest. <laughs> well, I think it's to keep on playing. Oh, uh, wrong, wrong order, wrong exactly. Order. If you would have drawn them in the other order, he'd be alive for another turn. Some guy on Reddit's <laughs> going to do the math on if he would have won had he drawn in the right order. Is probably under 1%. <laughs> Alright, well, is he dead? He's not dead. Uh, he's still alive. Never mind, he gives a key But playing. now he goes to 1, which means he kills him instantly, so now the odds of him winning are virtually none. Yeah. Especially yeah. with that axe. Three cards left. Three. That's that's not even close to enough. Well, no, I'm I'm still the Archmage Antonitis. Oh, okay, okay. Archmage Antonitis, yeah. yeah. So over under on seeing Archmage Antonitis. Yeah. I mean, originally, like back in the day, Freeze Mages didn't play. They're not back in the day that old, but like uh, like before GVG. Oh, they didn't run it. oh yep, there, <laughs> there it is. It he is. runs it. Okay. Oh, Success. Man. Well, he knows he's dead because there's definitely there's a, death a second bite. death bite in that deck. Yeah. That would be an interesting patron warrior with only wow. one of those. I, you know, it was a lot closer than we thought it would be. All right. It still wasn't close at all. Well, after right. what seemed like a super long match, Koiki is finally going to put himself on the board in this series. Going to take a win, but he's got two more to go if he wants to take this series. So. Yeah. But uh, I think that win's really good for him. I think that's important as a mental thing. Yeah. Like after yeah. the little mishap in the one series, now you've got your win under your belt. You've got Patron Warrior out of the way. You don't have to deal with math anymore. So you're just good to go <laughs> for the rest of the series. He had yeah. a lot of time to kind of get over his mistake in yeah. that yeah. match. Yeah. yeah, that was really good. From now on, as long as he can count to 30, he'll be good. Rogue yeah. versus that's... Freeze Mage involves a lot of math still, though. Yeah, that actually does involve a lot of math. But now he's prepared. He's <laughs> had his one mistake. And now he's back in it. He's taken this long time to recover because that match was grueling and took forever. Yeah. And now he's all ready to go. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, Demigod on the other side of the coin 
Yeah, he was just lose... wasn't good for him. Yeah, he was losing for the last like yeah, 45 he minutes. Just losing or so. for like 30 minutes straight. That could not have been fun. No. So that could be kind of a mental thing. It's not like he was forced to play. Yeah. For 30 <laughs> minutes, like 15 of those minutes, he probably could have right. just conceded out. And we would have said, okay, that was a good concede, but. Yeah, the um, infamous freeze mage versus warrior yeah. must happen every tournament. It, it wasn't even a control war either. He, he still had got shield blocks. Ridiculous. Yeah, that's yeah true. he had shield blocks. But yeah, this is like the combo patron, yeah, I guess. Like, I guess all the armor tools besides shield maiden are in that patron warrior anyway. So yeah, he's very heavy on the armor. Yeah. Um, so what's the next matchup? The matchup was uh, hunter now hunter yeah. against the mage. So save and rogue for last. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think the Hunter is going to have a really hard time. <laughs> yeah. With the Kona Colds, with the extra tech against the faster decks. It's not decks. a very good list for you beating it. You sure you're not thinking of Handlock? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Oh. Yeah, those yeah. Giants. He's got a lot of tech against them. Yeah. He can really deal one damage to those Giants and slow them down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, just think, if he has a True Silver, Consecrate, and Seal of Light, he can take out a single Giant. Wow, that's Whoa. incredible. And heal Woo. for six. So it's a yeah. full pitch from While Koyuki. While taking eight. <laughs> yeah, while taking eight. And he's thinking about keeping heal putt off the mulligan. Yeah, it's not that good early. I you don't need like it, it eventually. Eventually. Uh, you can, but if you never hit your uh, ice barrier, which we've yeah. seen he only runs one. Now, this is the first time Demigod's had a mad scientist in his opening hand. Gotta be no, he had one that. earlier, and he got the, the block off of it against Trump. Okay. And then he got block instead of barrier, and then Trump was able to just draw all the burn so the and first kill him. time this match, by yeah, back. come th this on. This match, yes. He's also keeping Kona Cold, which is I mean, probably this, something he has more experience with. Uh, I haven't played with that card in a while. I played like three games with it, and I was like, nah. Very average card. Yeah. You know, it's, it's not, not going to blow your opponent out. It's what are, what are the strengths and weaknesses? Like, why would you what what class would you tick Kona Cold in against, and when would it sort of be phased out? Uh, I like it against aggro, sort of just to slow the game down a little yeah, bit, yeah. and in against control, like you don't really need that many freezes because most of the time where Kona Cold would be practical, you just let him hit you in the face for yeah. like five or whatever, because mm -hmm. they don't really deal enough damage for it to matter because yeah. they don't have the burst potential. See, the interesting thing to me is he took out an Ice Barrier, which heals you for eight. And Kona Cold rarely heals you for more than eight. Yeah. yeah. And it's not a guaranteed heal, because you can and silence the freeze. He put in Heal Bot, which heals you for eight for five, where Ice Barrier heals you for eight for three or zero. Yeah. yeah. It's, so. <laughs> it's a weird choice. It's like Heal Bot um, usually is added on to the two Ice Barriers. Yeah, because you, yeah, you, yeah. you, you want more heal. heal. You don't usually substitute the two, so it's interesting to see how it's going to work out for him. Um, I could see Freezing Trap hitting play here. It very rarely gets value in this matchup. Yeah, yeah, and this is one of the times where it actually does pretty good work. Yeah, you, yeah. Don't, you don't want your opponent to get free value out of Mad Scientist as well. So he did keep that heal bot. We'll see how that pans out. Well, he, yeah, I, I, mean, I was talking to him again, and he said it was, he was disappointed that he didn't draw into his heal bot in the last match he played against Hunter against Trump. Well, of course, yeah. when you're dead, you're <laughs> yeah. disappointed yeah, well, you didn't have a heal. <laughs> yeah, I want the heals. <laughs> yeah, but those kind of things play into your mind. He, he's, it does, To definitely. him, he's thinking, oh, I lost because I didn't draw into heal bot <laughs> against Hunter, and so now he's like, oh, I have and to keep heal game, bot against Hunter. The game just gives him the opportunity. It's like, hey, here's the heal bot. <laughs> yeah. How are you going to turn it down? No, you can't. It's you impossible. Can't. Lothab's good, but it might. This is the type of hand it might have to be played on curve. Yeah. Which isn't as powerful. I like Lothab on curve against Freeze Mage. And Heelbot is a good response to Lothab on curve. Yeah. Yeah, it's not bad. One of the few pluses it has over uh, yeah. Ice Barrier. Why is playing Lothab on curve better against Freeze Mage than other classes? Because they generally can't do anything. Like, it locks down their entire turn. They don't have minions to play usually. Yeah. Especially going into their turn five, they literally have like nothing they can play unless they run heal butt. Then they can play heal butt. Yeah. A lot of times, uh, it was said before, like they're playing solitaire. Yeah. It's like if somebody was playing solitaire and you went up to their computer and, and said, I don't know. Said what? <laughs> I don't know enough <laughs> about solitaire. Everyone got quiet for your story oh and then just nothing. I was going to say, and they put a low thab in your solitaire game. <laughs> Like what is the what is the analogy for Lothab in solitaire? What's the end game to that joke? <laughs> what? 
<laughs> I thought I would catch it along the way. Oh just, my gosh. But then it was like, that was great. if somebody came up to you and put a blindfold on you for a turn. Or if they just unplugged the computer. It's actually really good that knife hit the face. <laughs> yeah. Like, that denies the, the, trap, the secret. Which yeah. could be barrier. He really needs to get that barrier out if it is barrier. And going back to Lothab, the one turn you really don't want to play it is turn seven going into their eight because that lets them frost Nova. Yeah, so they actually have a play. Mm -hmm. Weapon's a pretty good pickup here. So you can just Is it? Yeah, you just start getting in the face damage. Just glaze yeah, Zuka I'm and go. I'm really face. disappointed that this Doomsayer went off. I mean if, it often if I'm goes Koyuki. off. It often goes off against Hunter. Yeah. Yeah. I Let's suppose you, so. You never want to put seven burn into it. Yeah, yeah. You often run one owl and that's it to silence the Doomsayer in a deck that has no card draw. So. Yep. So here goes face, but with Healbot, with a secret. Yeah, I it, mean, that's barrier, it could be a whoa. Bad. that is nothing. That's yeah. a blank. Yeah. Like, Vitality totem. Vitality totem. He'll have plenty the top of time. deck. And that's huge. Vitality. Especially with the barrier. The barrier is key too. Holy smokes. <laughs> so much health now, and he gets the Emperor right off the top that's, to play into uh, an empty board because the Shredder minion was just a miss. That's huge for Demigod. Everything going his way right now. Yeah. Like, every bit of RNG that could have went his way just went his way that turn. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. Vitality Totem either doesn't matter at all. Oh, it's or getting it in there. Two games. Oh, yuck. <laughs> what does it say when it attacks? Like, what's the sound? Oh, let's see. Shh, shh. What? <laughs> what even is that? It didn't even do anything. It, it did something. <laughs> it sounded like a light breeze. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. That's it. It's like a bl small breeze is pushing the vitality totem into somebody's <laughs> face. Oh, man. So somebody, uh, we had a little um, conversation about this in one of Legendary Series weeks, and people have seen it now because there was a video on YouTube by a content creator. What is Leok? What kind of creature is he? Is it a bat? You would I don't say think that. It's a bat. <laughs> it's close, actually. Is it like a wyvern? Yeah, yeah, it's a wyvern. Yeah, yeah someone yeah. tweeted at me earlier today. Dan <laughs> said it was a, a lion mixed with a hawk, which is actually pretty close. Yeah. But I think it's a lion mixed with a bat. All right, well, I was, you were close. I was right. Yeah, yeah. So we're talking about both of them not being too good in their frost nova turn. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> now I was because he didn't take the Lothab opportunity earlier. Because he had better options there. He's kind of stuck with it now. Yeah. I don't see a way Koyuki wins. <laughs> yeah, that Emperor off the top. I mean, the hero power can always... Oh, well, he decides not to use it. The hero power can always put uh, yeah. Freeze Mage on the clock. If they don't draw on any of their burn, like, if the Freeze Mage just has a bunch of duds, if their card draw on their burn is in the bottom, bottom part of their deck, but we can already see as Alex Straza as a defensive, or even he might even use it offensively in this matchup, or and he has Power Blast, which is part of the burn, he has Heal Bot, yeah. There's yeah, I think. Well, he has no way to, right now, Demigod doesn't have any good clears in his hand. Yeah, but you get a lot of draws off that Acolyte with the do, yeah. the one damage do. uh, Vitality Totem. I'd probably bounce the Loot Hoarder and start drawing a card to turn. <laughs> yeah, that would be really good. I don't really like uh, bouncing this. Also, I would go face because uh, Snakes could be kind of a bummer. Actually, Snakes is really good, actually. Hey, so yeah, definitely go to Minion, because you can yep, fill his so board up completely and freeze he it. He figures it out. Just took yeah. a little bit of thinking. Um, I'm gonna take some extra damage. I think Maybe I setting taken... up for a Blizzard. Yeah. But even just yeah, like Cone Blizzard, Cold. Setting up for the Cone of Cold, potentially, yeah. yeah. All right, that makes sense. Ultimately, he will be getting two draws over two turns, regardless. He could've got three, though. Eventually, yeah. But I mean, this game's going to kind of be determined within the next few turns. You never know with Freeze Mage, man. I think you surely frost over here. Yeah, I don't think you want to eat all this. Like you said, the one thing he's lacking is a is an actual board clear. So yeah, you don't want to take any damage. Um, Kona Cold helps stall another turn. Yeah. And past that, I mean... Huh. It's not the worst. No, it's six damage over a couple of turns, so he can start yeah, putting in some face damage here. It's a lot of false hope for Koyuki. Is what it is. <laughs> he would have rather have drawn Alex. Yeah. He would have rather have drawn like. I've been in this spot. You're like, trap. Eh, maybe we can get there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no yeah. way. Eight cards going to be nine cards with the acolyte draw. Yeah, freeze mage hand. Here's zero. 
Yeah, the heal bot's really gonna be the dream crusher. Yep. So you're sitting in Koyuki's seat, you're like, what nine mage cards am I not dead to? <laughs> Koyuki also placed his minions very well to play around Konakul, I just noticed that. Yeah, yeah, it's very true. Being very aware of the double Konakul yeah. tech from Demigod. I feel like outside of like the two turns where w the one he missed lethal and the second one where he missed popping the block, he's, he's actually like, had some play, like really solid plays. Yeah, like, he's done everything very, very well. I've yeah. been impressed. Bring the pain. He's gonna freeze up that vitality to him. That thing's not attacking yeah. next turn. Yeah. <laughs> I'm tired of taking that one damage to the face. Man. Poor Vitality Totem. In other games, he would have been the MVP. Yep. In this one. He's been at 30 the whole game anyway. <laughs> there was a game at Vi game where someone won a game with Vitality yeah. Totem, right? Yeah. It just Vitality Totem's a bro. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. Most of the time. So, for the yeah, tree. he's just gonna kind of use that as some removal and get the healing in while he can. Yeah. Yep. Maybe. Well. Nope. Rip Vitality Totem. Rip. He feels threatened. <laughs> Priority kill on that guy. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, later in the game, if he doesn't find an opportunity to kill it, if he wants to start putting on burn, he has to, like, account for if he's killing him over three turns, he has to do extra damage each turn. Uh, Huffer sure. would have been the ultimate false soap here. Yeah. You'd be like, we're getting close. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> he is through the armor. I mean, what can he even draw? Like, kill command? I, there, the one thing that we can look out for here is there's no ice block. I mean, so Demigod could always throw an Alex him. And then die to tough and the kill die, command? And then die, yeah. All right. That would Whoa! Uh, He's gonna okay, frost okay, his face. Forward. Quick shot into kill command does it. Yeah. This is actually not the safest line of play. He's done though. He yeah, just but wants what else? the game to end. Oh yeah. And <laughs> just bot. like give it to me. Here yeah. we go. Wow. Quick that shot is really aggressive. Oh. Knife juggler. Oh no. Is so, there yeah. any freezing traps left? I don't. Yeah, know. there is. Okay. So. We're about to find out. Yeah, he's just immediately gonna trade that. Nothing. Oh, oh, there we no, go. There is. They lagged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the spectator client. Yeah. Uh, well, he's not actually. Yeah, he doesn't have enough damage no. quite yet. Not yeah. enough mana to use it all. Anyway. That was an interesting line of play. Yeah. Uh, you can. You can frostbolt uh, your own guy if yeah, you want. Scientist frostbolt to get ice block and then fireball face and then pyroblast next turn. I like how this game got more complicated because yeah. we just went aggro. Yeah, we just, just were like. Smork him. I am tired of spending so long playing this game. Let's just kill him. 2-0, let's go eat lunch. Yeah. <laughs> That's It is lunchtime. That's probably playing a factor. <laughs> yeah, the hunger really got to him. Some players are at a disadvantage when they have to play around meal time. At this yeah. point, yeah, you can literally just clear his board. Yeah, all right. He's setting up lethal. Okay, with set up lethal. Pyroblast. That's five. Yeah, now he only has 15 max damage with perfect draws. So that's going to do it. 15. <laughs> wow. Is that the, the double quick shot? No, that's there? only... He already used a quick shot. Oh. So that's one quick shot into a kill command. Okay. There's one thing Jackie's great at. It's Hello. counting how much damage you can do with Hunter. Oh, look at that BM. Uh, we get one emote. That's yeah. pretty rude. Uh, top uh, deck fireball? Oh, not even going to use the top deck. All righty. He well, just wants to get a lunch. Pyroblast to the face, and Demigod is going to be the first player moving out of Group A. He automatically qualifies for the top eight on Sunday, where he will compete in that eight-player single elimination playoff stage. Big congratulations to him. And he played exceptionally well, I'd say. Yeah. yeah really good. A lot of his games, not many mistakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Koyuki, of course, uh, he's not out. Uh, since he did win his first match of the day, he will play in the decider match later on. So he'll play the loser of, or sorry, the winner of the losers match right. uh, in the elimination match later on. So we'll have another chance. I'm sure he'll he'll want to sort of regroup and um, maybe sort of try and forget some of the things that yeah. happened during <laughs> during that uh, during that matchup. So Demigod's lineup designed to counter handlock didn't even encounter a single handlock and still won. Yeah, that's did really incredible. well against Hunter. Really well against Hunter. Well, it just so happens <laughs> that some of the cards that he plopped in there were.
uh, were great against Hunter. And one of the things that was great against Hanlock, of course, was the double equality in the Paladin. Yeah. Uh, so those are things that aren't that great against Hunter, but um, it was uh, really well played by him. Uh, do you think that lineup has any like vulnerabilities from Demigod as moving on? I know we haven't seen the decks from the other groups, uh, yeah. but do you think there are any holes in that plan moving on to the playoff stage for Demigod? Uh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, there's definitely... If someone doesn't have a Hunter or a Handlock, <laughs> then uh, they're going to be kind of weak to that. Like Patron Warrior yeah. and uh, not Hunter and some other stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, every lineup has its weaknesses. It's more uh, a question of, did you read the competition correctly? And for his group, which he didn't know beforehand, yeah. but he just made a read that there'd be, you know, a lot of hunters. handlock apparently, yeah. and also a lot of hunters, yeah. which his lineup seemed to perform very well against. Yeah. yeah. So, I think hunters is the most popular deck so far in this tournament. So I think that's everyone's a very, had one. Yeah. Every single player so far has had a hunter, so it's a very good read by him expecting a lot of hunters and preparing for it. All right, well, we do have Ferdinand standing by with our winner, Demigod, on the stage. Let's send it over to them. Thank you so much, TJ. That's right. Congratulations, Demigod. You advance in first place in the group uh, to you know your manager and some of your teammates here. This comes as no surprise, but you, you said you felt a little nervous during that match, didn't you? This whole tournament, uh, I do have nerves, but I try to stay calm so I can make the best play out of uh, with all the cards I have. And... Um, that patron warrior, holy crap. One HP, dude. I was like, and then I had the seal of light, so I thought I was okay after that because um, his highest weapon damage is four, and I guess that secured that game. Well, that's kind of like, you know, Paladin's weakness for a long time. Not being able to finish the game and get across that, uh, the finishing line there. Uh, just, just in general, did you anticipate being able to advance first place in the group, or is this come not as a surprise for you? Um, honestly, I didn't even think so. Um, this is my first big LAN tournament, and their nerves take place, but uh, I try to stay calm, like I said, and hope for the best. RNG, like I said, RNG gods, but I think I played a little skillfully as well. So I hope to prove to everyone that I can do it and make it to the top. Don't prove to everyone. Prove to yourself, man. That's what that's what card games all about. If there's anything Yu-Gi-Oh taught me in terms of the cartoon show. Uh, so cool, man. You've uh, you've won some money. You've got top eight. You got some world championship points. I don't know if you've been on the board yet, but that's pretty valuable. But uh, it's awesome because now you get to go to the round of eight and potentially threaten the tournament. So congratulations. Uh, do you have any like last words? Because this is the last time we'll see you today. Uh, you're done, so you don't have to play anymore. Do you have any final words and shoutouts? Um, thanks to my two teams. I'm actually on two teams. Uh, one is local, and yeah, it's weird, but you know. Um, Team Bro from Hawaii and Vicious Syndicate. Um, they're great organizations, and um, thanks to uh, uh, my family, uh, whoever, everyone who supported me down the lane. So, hope to do my best uh, Saturday, Saturday or Sunday? Sunday. Sunday, okay, okay. All right, and that's about it. And Aloha. All right. There you go. I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting that. <laughs> All right. Well, Aloha. That'd be the sickest BM emo because Aloha also means goodbye. Oh, okay. yeah. they, should, they, should they should put that in the game for sure. All right. And with that, the congratulations to Demigod. But we're not done with Group A just yet. Before we go into the, the next portion, we also have Crip, who's joined by a special guest and also a player in this tournament. Hey, guys. How's it going? Kriparian here. I'm joined by Kit Katz, uh, newly, I guess, of Team Grand National Champions. Are you enjoying your time here, Kit Katz? I'm having a grand time there, Crip. How about yourself? Uh, I'm enjoying it as well. I just had my foodie time, so I'm feeling really good about the rest of the day. So me and you are both Control Warrior lovers. Um, are you disappointed that more people aren't playing Control Warrior today? No, I mean, we've had a lot of Control Warriors today, right? Like two or something? Like Kabi, or not Kabi, but uh, what's his name? I forget Group A already. Sorry, I'm tired. Well, we've seen four players, and there hasn't been four control warriors. So I'd say that's not enough. Would you agree? Amen to that. Amen to that. We've been uh, pestered by the patron plague, and uh, I got, I'm glad to see Demigod got out with uh, some cool, interesting decks. Yeah, indeed. So I really like your shirt. We're going to talk about that for a little bit. It's a Harry Potter shirt. And uh, it has all the, the four houses here. 
I want you to explain what Harry Potter house would you be a part of and why? Obviously Slytherin because I'm ambitious, man. Got to take everyone down. It's the goal. All right, you heard it here first. Kit Kats would be Slytherin into the playoff stage. <laughs> All right, that's pretty good. I don't know about that. So, Kikats, what group are you actually in? I'm in Group B. You're gonna see me next, man. I'm gonna play a little bit of play a little bit of Warrior. You all know that. All right. After watching Group A, are there any players that you're particularly scared of moving into the the playoff stage if you make it there? If I make it to the playoff stage versus Group A, uh, I guess Demi guy was looking pretty sick out there. He wasn't making any missed plays. His plays looks looking really crisp, and he's got some interesting decks, man. Paladin. And, Freeze Mage with only one Blizzard double Cone of Cold. It's pretty unique. Yeah, it, it is really unique. We talked about it quite a bit. And uh, the next matchup, I think, is actually going to be the losers match, which is um, Copy versus Trump. So, uh, do you have any predictions for this matchup? Any player that you want to see win? Trump's gonna crush Copy. Let's get some Trump W's in chat. It, yes. <laughs> Let's get some Trump W's in chat. But I actually think we're going to send it uh, back over to the caster desk uh, where we have some, play some guys from the broadcast team ready to bring the losers match for Group A. All right, this is actual 